Wow, this is feeling very deja vu-ish, isn't it? And I'm loving it. I'm John Zadar. I am the host of On Top and Hot, and this is the weekend of September 10th. Now, in case you don't know what it is I do here, I focus in on hot OTC and penny stocks. I'm looking for stocks that have potential, and I look for that potential in a lot of different arenas. I'm looking at charts. I'm looking for breakouts over the 50-day and the 200-day SMA, regardless if there's any news or buzz. Just the charts themselves can be enough to get that thing moving. But I definitely pay attention to the buzz online. There's lots of research I can cash in on from hundreds of thousands of people on Twitter or Investor Hub just by going there and reading and learning stuff I may not know. And of course, you've got the news. This is news I've been looking at over the last four or five days. I am constantly looking at the news, a lot. Now, the oldest news here is at the top and the newest news is down at the bottom. Now, those are all penny stocks on the OTC market. Now, I make that stipulation because a penny stock can be any stock under $5 regardless of what market it's sold on. So, it can be on the NASDAQ, New York Stock Exchange, anywhere. And I'll be honest, I prefer to trade penny stocks on the major exchanges. One main reason is they are free to trade, which gives me advantages more than just saving money. On the OTC market, I got to pay seven to get in and seven dollars to get out. That's fourteen bucks I've got to recoup before I make any profit. That makes every single trade just a little more tricky. On the Nasdaq, no fees. I can buy a stock that I like at a dollar a share, get one thousand shares for a thousand bucks. Great, but now I can play the game and not have it cost me. The ask could jump from a dollar to a dollar twenty-five. But nobody wants to pay that $1.25 because it's too big of a spread. You know what? I'll buy one, literally one share for $1.25 and it isn't going to cost me anything. I am going to kick that price up even though I paid $0.25 cents more for my share. I only bought one and all my 1,000 shares have just gone up 25% and I just made $250 on all the shares I was holding buying one share $0.25 cents more than I paid for all my other shares and it didn't cost me anything to do it. That's one of the things I really like about trading on the major exchanges. Now, right now, we're over here at the otcmarkets.com website. I look at a lot of OTC stocks. I do a lot of research, and I try to make it as quick and as easy as possible. And this is the best site I have found. This site is updated every single day by FINRA and the SEC. So there's no reason to go out searching for information. Come here, get it right the first time. And if, per chance, you don't find what you're looking for, Google and the Internet are always there to go dive into. So let's take a look at how our OTC market fared today. Doesn't look too great at all. We had a little bit of increase. Our dollar volume is at 1.6 billion. I think that fell from 1.9 billion. Our average is 2.1, but we haven't seen that in over a week. Share volume, yay! It's back up over 10 billion. We've been down to 7 billion and we're bouncing. We're doing some big bounces now. I don't know if she's going to stay here. If you're going to be praying for anything this week, uh, pray that our share volume go up. We could use it. Trades, we're right on the basement floor still. 250,000 is where we have been hovering for a couple months now and we just can't seem to get away from it. We do push up, we do push down, but as you can see, we're right about there. Now, just because it's a slow market doesn't mean there aren't stocks to consider. And I've got a special stock I want to share with you today, a stock that came to my attention, I did a deep dive on, and I really like. So I'm going to share this information with you right now. Hope you like it too. So the stock I want to share with you today is a penny stock on the NASDAQ. This is ticker NCRA Nocera Inc. They finished today at $2.71 with about 2% loss which really does surprise me because they had news come out on Thursday, which I thought was really good news. But to be honest, that's not why I'm showing you this company. No, no. I see this company as a great long hold. I really do. The company was introduced to me by a loyal YouTube viewer, T. Rick. Thank you, sir. I jumped into this and I seen the company's been in business for a while, but they've changed what they've done here recently. Well, not exactly changed what they've done, but changed where they're doing it. And I think that's going to be a big benefit to the shareholders. So what exactly does this company do? All right. 
It's not very glamorous, so give me a second here. This is a company out of Taiwan that works with fish farms. I know, I know. Come on, come on. Don't go anywhere yet. Let me put some lipstick on the fish here and make it a little more attractive for you. Let me expand on what it is they're doing, show you some background information, where they're heading, even some words from the CEO and see if I can change your opinion on it. It's not that fishy, honestly. So I've jumped on over here to an article that's got a pretty decent description. They tell us here that Norcia is a fully integrated, sustainable seafood company that provides land-based recirculation aquaculture systems. I like fish farms better. <laughs> or you can call it RAS for both fresh and saltwater fish and shellfish. And they invest in fish farms by building these high-tech RASs. Now, a RAS basically is just a huge aquarium, right? You can see right there in the picture, they're giant aquariums. And there's really no difference between the aquarium in your house and these giant monsters, except that you're probably not eating the fish that you have at home, but you're still buying equipment that's already invented, you're putting it in your aquarium, and it's cleaning the water for you automatically. And that's what this company is doing. They're keeping it simple. Now, why do I say it that way? Because I know of another company that's into aquaculture. That is Natural Shrimp, ticker SHMP. Now, I was with them for quite a while. They went through a lot of process of inventing equipment to clean the water. I don't know why they made such a big deal out of it. It was a drawn out process. It was expensive. Why not just keep it simple? Now, let's look at a little foundational information about this company. First thing you need to know is the company just uplisted to the NASDAQ from the OTC pink just a couple months ago. And they did it by way of a very, very small reverse merger. Two for three. For every three shares of stock you had, they gave you two. So you did lose one third or something like that. But in either case, it was very small. But what it did was make the float even smaller. We got a float of 4.3 million shares now. Now, the company went into business back in 2002, but it wasn't until about 2018 that they actually really started doing a whole lot. They were doing a lot of consulting before because there's a lot of regulations in the Asian countries about water usage, and fish farms just weren't getting a break anywhere until 2018 when China eased their regulations and this company jumped in there fast. First mover, I pretty much believe. They tell us here that prior to 2021, Norcia was initially focused on the Chinese market due to the opportunities presented by changes to regulations governing water use for fish production in China. As of October 2020, we had delivered 551 fish tank systems to six separate Chinese-based fish farms and two fish tank systems for our own Taiwan showroom. However, in October 2020, the government of Taiwan began supporting the Green Power and Solar Sharing Fish Farms Initiative. In view of the opportunities resulting from this initiative, in October 2020, Norcia ceased all operations in China and moved all of its technology and back office operations to Taiwan. The company now only operates out of Taiwan. They sold it all off. They were doing well. They were making money. They were growing in size, but it seems they just did not want to be under the Chinese rule of what they could or couldn't do, especially with the American markets. So they moved over to Taiwan and they're just out of reach, right? The company is now posed to grow its existing operations in Taiwan and expand into the development and management of land-based fish farms in Taiwan and North and South America. The company does not currently have any intentions of conducting operations in China or Hong Kong anymore. Now let's take a look at another article I got. Now, there is a lot of reasons why fish farms just make sense. We don't want to overfish. We don't want fish that have diseases or lice. We don't want pollutants in our fish. But there's a lot of good reasons, too. I know, those are all bad. Seafood. It has the highest protein retention compared to chicken, pork, or beef. Second, you need less food to feed fish than you do any other of those animals. That's great. Less cost involved. And the third third reason is a little bizarre. Not only that, but aquaculture has lower greenhouse gas emissions than other types of farming. I guess they've discovered that fish farts don't bother the ozone as much as cow farts do. Yeah, it's a thing. Google it. 
They tell us that they are much more efficient than natural water body systems because a RAS not only recycles 90% of the water they're using, but they keep it clean. And they can produce up to 80 times more fish than traditional farming. I mean, think about that, 80 times more fish, all clean. I mean, you go out into the ocean, throw your nets or whatever it is you're doing, you don't know how much fish you're gonna catch or what condition they're gonna be in. Here you have total control. And what area of the world wouldn't want consistent, steady flow of healthy, clean, tasty fish? I think everybody would want that. Now I see one more piece of information here, just gonna drop it in your lap. NCRA currently has seven sites approved for Taiwan. The company is planning to work with solar EPC companies like JV Energy Technology Company on future solar sharing fish farms. So they've got lots of plans. And speaking of plans, let's go take a look at that CEO interview. He's got some plans too. Without a doubt, a letter from the CEO, an interview with the CEO have got to be some of my favorite pieces of information to look at. Why? Because the CEO is the man that makes or breaks the company. He's the one at the wheel. So I really want to know what's in his head, especially if I'm in the company for a long hold. And here is our man for this company, Mr. Jeff Chang. He is not only the CEO, he's the founder of the company. Why does that matter? Because a founder has given birth to his baby, his dream. He's going to do everything he can to not only protect, but promote this company. It's in good hands with the founder. You can count on that. Now, the company's had some recent news here. Just here in March, Norcia announced its plan to co-develop the Green Energy Industrial Park in Taiwan's Taiyi Township. The 60 hectare acre project will integrate Norcia's innovative aquaculture with green power solutions such as solar. Although political tensions within Taiwan have delayed the project, Jeff hopes to break ground during the third quarter of this year. That's right now, so something could be around the corner. They go on to tell us that that announcement of the park has piqued interest here in the United States, where fish supplies have been drastically affected by the pandemic, with imports tumbling 37% in the first nine months of 2020. And on top of that, the political standoff between U.S. and China isn't helping things at all. Now, they have a lot of interest from the state of Georgia here in the U.S. They potentially want to build one of the biggest fish farms in the U.S., They've gotten a lot of requests from the Brazilian government. And they tell us here they've had interest from South America, but primarily for the development of smaller systems that farmers can use on their own land to boost their own income. However, the companies made use of these smaller systems by testing them to see what fish and shellfish could easily be growing. And they've got a long list now. Now they go on to tell us that these recirculating aquaculture systems have been under fire in the past for their carbon footprints because of the continuous operating pumps and their temperature regulation equipment. So Norcia is able to address this issue by using smaller systems that only use one kilowatt of power and partnering with solar power companies has also helped the company reduce that environmental impact. Now, this is where it gets real. I appreciate this, and this is why I brought up shrimp earlier. We are using alternative materials that help us to make everything cheaper. Of course, we are not using the most advanced technology in the world, but what we are using is the most cost-efficient technology in the world. And that's really all it takes. You don't have to reinvent the wheel. Just use the ones you've got and use them properly. Now, the great thing about this business is you don't need a lot of preparation on the land. You just need to scrape it down and make it flat, you know? And then these guys come in and in a matter of hours can have a tank set up. Hour and a half, they said, is the average time to set up a full tank and everything you need. So they can do this very quickly and efficiently. Now, I've got one more thing I want to show you here, news that came out just the other day. So this news did come out on September 8th, and I really like this news. This is the most recent news, and it was the capstone for me. It was the last piece of the puzzle. When I saw this, I said, smart CEO, I like what he's up to. So they tell us here that Norcira takes substantial stake in Taiwan-based food processing firm. 
Nocera has acquired 80% controlling interest of Mikan Institutional Food Development, a Taiwan-based company for $4.3 million. Mikan, a food processing and catering company established in 2003, is engaged in producing hot and frozen meals, bento boxes, and group meals. It also processes vegetables and fruits for other companies in the food industry as well. Mikan has been catering and serving bento boxes to local banks and companies for the last 19 years. The CEO, Jeff, he says that we believe our bento boxes and our food products will generate revenue daily. And that's what I see. This is what we really need. You've got your fish farm business, but really it's self-sustaining. You don't have to keep coming back every month doing service on these aquaculture tanks. They're basically taking care of themselves. So unless you're building, 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 you're not making any more money. You need something more regular. And that's what people eating on a daily basis is going to give you. They also tell us down here that the acquisition is expected to generate up to $10 million in revenue for the fiscal year 2023. So that's a big deal. They now have a new subsidiary that's going to help them make money, lots of money it looks like, on a regular basis. On top of the big money they're going to be making setting up these fish farms wherever they set them up around the world and here in the United States. Now, before we go bouncing on over to charts to see what's happening there, we still have some more stats to look at for this company, don't we? Looking at her relative volume, she's normally doing about 77,000 shares a day. Not very much. Today, she didn't do much more than that, about a quarter million. But that is a 300% increase in volume. So she is getting more attention, but she's definitely still under the radar as far as I'm concerned. Share structure. I told you she had a low float. She just had that real small reverse split, and now she's left with a 4.3 million float. Outstanding. I love it. Financials. Oh, yeah. The company's getting back into the groove. Remember, it was October of 2020. They divested of all their Chinese business, and that was all the business they had was China. So they were basically starting over. And we see here at the end of 2020, they had done $1.1 million. At the end of 2021, they did almost 10 times that much, almost $10 million. And looking at the quarterly, we got $3 million the first three months. That's a $1 million a month. And $2.1 million for the second three months. And they've got news about this. They're bragging about it because it's an 82% increase year over year. The first six months of last year, they did $2.8 million. First six months of this year, they did $5.1 million. So whatever they're doing, they're doing it right. They're on the right track. Taking a look at those disclosures. Well, we do have two 8Ks here in the last 30 days. You've got one here. This is a uh, public offering, an underwriting. They got $6.5 million, I believe. And then this one here, they're adding more officers to the company. And when you look at the news, you get a nice outline of basically everything I was saying here. Uh, this was back uh, August of this year. Nocera announces pricing of $6.5 million public offering. NASDAQ listing and reverse stock split. Tick, tick, tick. Then they tell you about that uh, $6.5 million underwritten public offering I was just showing you on the 8K. And then, of course, you've got your deal there 80% controlling interest in Mike's and Institutional Food Development. I think they're on the right track here, folks. The company is under the radar, they're pretty cheap right now. And I think a lot of investors are going to start looking at this company. I think food is going to be a commodity and seafood especially because you can only get it out of the water and our waters are getting polluted and everybody's a little worried about that. And if you can take away the fear, you're going to get more customers. I really like what this company's doing. I am really hoping they get into America quick. Let's go take a look at that chart now. So we are looking at NCRA. This is my free trading platform. If you like what you see, just mosey on over to TD Ameritrade. Tell them the stock wizard sent you. <laughs> I'm kidding. Just sign up for their free trading account. Keep your account open. That's all you really got to do. And you can use this anytime you like. Absolutely free. So this is NCRA, but that is a one-year, one-day chart. Now, it surprised me to find that because usually when you have a stock uplist from the OTC to the NASDAQ, they get a whole brand new chart. 
That's because they changed the ticker. They didn't change the ticker here. So we only have one chart going back for years. So this high bubble back in January of $7.20 is on the OTC market. She has been falling all the way down here to the NASDAQ's low bubble of $1.82. And would you believe she fell on the day she came on the market? August 11th, that's the day she came on. There was a little pre-market jump as you'll see, but she fell from there hit this low bubble and has been bouncing off that low bubble in recovery. Lots of volume on this side, lots of volume on that side. Almost looks like a cup and handle is about ready to form. Now the real pattern I see is between my percentage price oscillator, that's like the MACD, except the MACD uses the full price, the PPO just uses a percentage of the price. And my ADX, put this PPO on the top, your ADX underneath. The ADX is giving you continuation of trend. As long as the direction of this line doesn't change, the direction of the trend doesn't change. It's not whether this is going up or down, just if it's going the same direction. So you see when the blue line is coming down and then scooped up, look at the mirror image there. When the blue and the red line come together, the price is guaranteed to fall. You can see that. And then when the directional change happened, these two started spreading. You can see that. Well, it's easy to see when that is spreading, the price will always be rising. As long as they're going apart from each other, the price is always rising. So you can use this as a great tool to tell you when to get into a stock and when to get out. Because if one of these lines starts to change direction, the price is going to change trend. So it's a great technical to keep your eye on. The MACD is backing us up on this. We got a crossover and it is surging towards the signal line. And the RSI was pushing up, but it's had a slight pullback here. Let's take a look at our six month, four hour chart. So she's been falling all this time under the 50 and it was right there, folks. That's when she came on the market. You had a jump pre-market and then it fell all day, the next day, the next day, all the way down to that low bubble. And now she's pushing back up and she's looking pretty good. Our ADX and our PPO still going apart. So everything looks good there. Our MACD, what's that look like? Ah, uh, yeah, you can see it's pointing up as well, and our RSI is just about ready to approach the overbought section, so that looks good. Let's take a look at our 20-day, one-hour view. Oh, this is looking great. We're in the cup now. You see how all of our SMAs have crossed the 200? All of them. That is great. We've still got a spread going on our PPO and our ADX. Our MACD has a crossover imminent right now, and our RSI is pushing up through the 60s towards the overbought. Everything is looking really nice. Five day, five minute chart. Hey, look at this, it's actually going uphill. We've had three days of run, hit a high bubble here of $2.85. She went sideways. I'm gonna presume she was waiting for the 200 to catch up to her. She paid her homage to the 200 and has bounced off of that and looks like she's ready to continue. She really does. Now, I'm not pointing this out for the continuation, but there's a lot going on with this company and investors may start to notice it. So this could take off. Like I said, I could be surprised. But over the long haul, I have no doubts this company is going to do well. I think Jeff Chang is going to push this company. As I said, it's his baby. It's his dream. I think he's going to really be working hard at it. And I think they want to be over here in America. And I think that's when it'll explode. When we see news of them settling here in America that they bought land, woohoo, this thing's going to pop. And right now, let me back this up just a wee bit. Let's go back to the four hour. I think this price is history. I don't think we'll ever come back to this price unless there's a serious problem. I think she's going to get above that resistance. It's going to become a support. She'll get on top of that 200. And I think she's just going to start bouncing uphill all the way from there. Of course, she'll have bad days, but do I think she'll come this low again? No, not in my personal opinion, I don't. So personally, I'm going to make an entry down here. I'm going to get in while the price is cheap. I'm not going to get everything I want, but I'm going to get maybe 40% of what I want. And then I'm going to watch her. You can't tell if it's going to bounce up or down. But if she starts to take off, I'll get the rest. But I am looking at this for a long hold. So just to recap of some of the things we covered so that you don't forget, Year to date, they did 82% increase in revenues. They went up from 2.8 million to 5.1 million. They are picking up the pace. NCRA has plans to expand their projects into the USA this year. 
NCRA is able to produce 80% more food than traditional fish farming. In other words, 80 times as much fish. NCRA just uplisted to the NASDAQ from the OTC not too long ago and word is spreading. And finally, Nocera Inc. acquires 80% controlling interest in Mikan Institutional Food Development Company, which I think is really big news. I really like this company. I like what I see here. The fact that they just made this deal here recently with Mikan and are going to be making money on a regular basis from people eating their products every single day, that's excellent. And they got the big money coming from the fish farms. And as soon as they get here in America, I expect a huge surge. I really expect this stock to jump when they say, we've got property in Georgia or we got a contract to build our first fish farm here in the U.S. I'm expecting a huge jump. And over the long haul, I'm expecting this company to really impress us. Or at least impress me because I know I'm getting in. What you do is definitely up to you. Do more DD, folks. There's a lot of information out there. Hopefully, I've given you enough to make you curious and interested. Remember, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See ya.